Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. Welcome back to another Digital Rebar tutorial. In this case, we're going to show you how to use the dynamic inventory. So you can run playbooks from your desktop against Digital Rebar uh, inventories dynamically. And I'll show you how to set that up from scratch. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this is different than running Ansible inventories in a, in a workflow, which we'll have a separate video about, um, and using Tower, which is also separate. So there's a lot of ways to use Ansible. Um, this is, I guess, the more traditional one, if you want to say that. They are quoting traditional. Um, so in this case, what I've done is I've built a system. It's got three machines in it. Uh, all that's pretty straightforward. And what I want to be able to do is, is leverage those machines as a cluster. And over here, I'm going to bring up a, a terminal. I'm trying to bring up a terminal, if I can find it. Oh, and then for the example that we're going to use, I should tell you that I'm going to use Rancher's uh, K3S, which is a light version of Kubernetes, and they have an Ansible playbook um, that is super, super lightweight, right? Just a very simple but multi-node inventory. Um, and so I wanted to show, show you how to do that. It's a pretty good example of, of how this stuff should work. Let's see. And I just need to find my directories. There we are. All right, so I'm going to assume that you don't know that much about the Digital Rebar CLI, um, which we call DRP CLI, or DERP. Uh, so from that perspective, what you the first thing you're going to need to do is actually make sure the DRP CLI is working from this system. Uh, always a good starting point. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the address of the machine, and I'm going to put that into uh, our uh, environment. So I'm going to export RS, which is Rocket Skates. That's our, our original code name long, long ago for digital rebar provision. Uh, endpoint. And it's an HTTPS request going against that address. All right, so if I do that, I haven't changed the username and password. So the, the DRP CLI is going to work as defaults. So I can just say info get. And that showed me that I have my auth right, my endpoint right. Get a lecture a little bit fancier and I can say machines list and then I can pass it through JQ to get the name of the machines and that way you'll have some evidence that I'm actually showing you the same system that we are talking about see so same systems good you'll notice it's using the internal addresses that's not a problem for what we're trying to do um, and then the next thing we need to do is actually build some profiles um, for this. So the way Ansible works with Digital Rebar, the dynamic inventories, is it's going to map uh, profiles in Digital Rebar into groups for Ansible. So I need a group. If you look at this uh, inventory, I'm going to need a master group, which is a profile, a node profile, and I'm going to need this uh, thing that Digital Rebar doesn't recognize, which is a parent-child parent relationship. So I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to do it with the CLI because uh, it's pretty straightforward to do that. Um, so in this case, what I've done is I've said DRP CLI profiles create, and it's just created a master profile. Uh, if I want to do the same thing in the UX, it would look like this. Uh, let's see, profiles is down here. Here's the master profile that I created. There's no parameters in that right now. I could just add a profile called node. That would be great. Don't need any parameters in that, and I'm just going to add that one too. Uh, and so in this case, I now have those two. I need a third one. So in this case, I created that K3S cluster. And in this one, you'll notice I added a parameter. Let's look at it on the UX, because it's a little bit prettier. Here's K3S cluster. And now there is a parameter called Ansible children that has master and node. So when this gets rendered, it's going to be rendered into that hierarchy. Um, I could add other parameters. So if I add another parameter, it's going to show up as variables in the list. Um, that's pretty straightforward. It looks very cool. So now what I've, what I've done behind the scenes is I've already brought this uh, Python script, drpmachines.py. Uh, and this is all in the documentation, by the way. There is uh, Ansible docs, integrations Ansible, explaining how this stuff works. and, and 
exactly the steps that we're, we're going through uh, and parameters and command line configurations and things like that. Uh, so you should definitely review that and all this is pulled back out of um, this one integrations file. Now this integrations file uses uh, tip as of July it'll be 3.14 when it's released so there there is something in this uh, DRP machines Python that requires uh, current version current tip version 3.14 or above um, other people have been working on some of these older ones and they, they might still give you good results this video is about DRP machines Python and what I want to do is I want to show you specifically what's going on with this so I've already uh, dynamically linked DRP machines Python from my uh, digital rebar provision directory into DRP Python. So if I go DRP machines Python and just run it, I'm gonna get a mess, it's gonna look horrible. Uh, I'm gonna use JQ and clean it up a little bit so you get some pretty output. And what you'll see is a ton of information has come back uh, in this format. This format is the Ansible Dynamic Inventory JSON format not documented very well um, but happily this works as uh, some trial and error elbow grease um, but basically what we're doing is we have some groups we have a group called node right now it has no hosts so I'm going to show you how to fix that we have uh, a list of all the hosts we have some meta information uh, which is all of our host variables showing you some important information including the public host IP address um, this is actually set by an environment variable in my system where I tell it, hey, pick up the Ansible host from the IPv4 public address. And I still have to tell you how I got that. Missed that in the last video. So there's all that information, some extra meta information. And then I have all the groups, all the profiles of my system exposed as groups. And here you'll see the children creating that, that information. Um, what I hinted at is in the workflows, Discover AWS has this uh, discover phase that creates parameters that are cloud specific. So it tells me you know, instance ID, instance type, and you can pull these into your um, any of your, your plays and runs and, and your workflow templates, or you can actually pull it into Ansible because it's available now in your Ansible inventory. All right, hopefully you're with me so far. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going, but what I haven't done is I haven't shown you how to put a machine into the inventory, and it's really simple. All I have to do is take one of my machines, go to a profile, and assign it to the profile that I want. So in this case, this is the master profile, just like putting a machine in a group. Uh, put this in a node, and those two are in a node. You can have machines in as many profiles as you want, um, and so literally when you do this, um, and assign machines to profiles, it is going to enable that dynamic inventory to do the magic that it's supposed to do. And I will show you exactly what that looks like. So here, if you go back up to my node, now my node includes hosts. If I included variables in that profile, they would show up in the variables. So I could actually override just like you expect Ansible to do. I could just st stuff it in the profiles. There, I've been showing you a mix of API and, and UI so that you would understand. You can control everything I'm showing you completely through the CLI. Uh, you can even build content packs and things like that. So it's an incredibly programmable way to uh, make this happen. And remember, this isn't just AWS. I'm showing you the digital rebar APIs. You could use this to generate a physical data center just as easily. Uh, and this is handy because I don't. you can replicate this with just an Ansible account, no other magic. All right, so now we've gotten to a point where we're ready to actually test that this, this sucker works. Um, so let's make sure we have one or two other things. I wanna make sure I set my Ansible user to CentOS. That's good, because uh, Amazon's gonna expect that. Uh, I also wanna make sure I turn off uh, key checking, because I haven't logged into these machines ever before. And um, there's something that I've, I told you I had done in the background, I'll just redo it. I want to set the host address to this parameter. So this is actually literally telling Ansible inventory file generator to use that value for the host address, uh, which is what I showed you set on the machine. So now that I've done all that prep work, I should be able, fingers crossed, to go in and just run Ansible on this system. All right, so we got warnings. Permanent, I had to add permanent keys. 
Let's see if this runs through the second time. No. Let's see what's going on. SSH. Could be that I need to cut this thing to be root, and we'll fix that. Yep, permission denied. So let's go in and call this root instead. Ah, there you go. So I had the name wrong. It's just root. Excellent. So now if I go back and do ping, I love making mistakes like this that are easy to fix in a video because then you can see some of the troubleshooting that we go through as we play with this. So at this point, I validated that my Ansible can hit all the machines. If I want to just do the node group, I can say node here. It's going to pull it straight out and do node. Very straightforward. So at this point, things are looking pretty good for me to actually install K3S. Um, and notice, I'm not I'm just using the digital rebar APIs. It's just it's hitting machines. It's making normal requests using my credentials. Um, there's some extra values, but we're keeping this simple. Uh, so you can definitely go deeper if you want. So let's go in and do the playbook uh, that K3S is suggesting we do. So in this case, they're telling us to do an Ansible playbook with site YAML. So if I do that over here, that's OK, except I need to give it my inventory. So I, I don't want to just use the inventory. I haven't made any. I can use the dynamic inventory with the dash i. So now I literally cloned this repo and then ran Ansible Playbook straight out of the repo. And um, it's installing K3S using my dynamic inventory. That simple. Um, and so if you're running, you know, in Amazon, you could just use Am you know, <laughs> Ansible against Amazon. I know that. You know that. But if you had a physical data center and you had a, a system where you wanted to collect inventory and manage inventory and actually build dynamic infrastructure, this, what I just showed you, you can get Digital Rebar to bring your machines through their provisioning process and then uh, install keys and go. Uh, and you are... Uh, able to, to make that happen without building or maintaining uh, static inventory files. And all you have to do to change things around is switch up the profiles. Um, you can even filter based on parameters. So you can have different machines in different runs and have those be um, literally grouped based on how you want things to progress. So tons and tons of power to create truly dynamic data center automation for your Ansible playbooks. Uh, I hope this is interesting. Uh, it's it's really basic functionality for us, but at the same time, uh, really can change the way you use Ansible in a physical infrastructure layout, um, or even in cloud layouts. Who knows? Maybe you'll get creative. Uh, either way, we'd love to hear about your success, or if you're having challenges, we want to hear that too. So please uh, go to rackend.com, join our Slack channel. Uh, there's a support link for the joining Slack channel. Uh, we have a really active community of operators there. Uh, who are solving all sorts of problems and collaborating in really interesting ways. And we would love to see you there. 